San Bonani Makaya, San Amgele, Sonja Nelisha, Lago Teli Teta on SABC One, the biggest new talk show in Africa. And as we get into a new week and a new day, and of course, Sir Chavu Tim Nati Lam Slanji. Nangeka Maumelo to Agamia, Ukwaninus Beu Zizi Munja, Lona Sita Sam Soto, Sam Sisu, this is Andy Zora Kibashi, who is our sign language interpreter. Now, as you probably would have known, Uguti, Africa is a big continent, but not just that, it's South Africa, Yona. Iloni Liz, it's known as a prosperous nation, but amongst that, as the youth, what are the things that we look at when we talk about African development? When you talk about EU leadership, what are the challenges? It makes me ask, what countries have you been to? And do you know the things that the people about that are going through? Now, amongst those problems, to hear, of course, about the passing of Umam Zinzi, 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 Zinzi,
Now looking at these lists, Melody, which which are some of the countries that you have traveled to? Uh, I've been to uh, Mozambique. Uh, I've been. I to... said the list, Mo M Melody. Did oh, you say Mozambique on the okay, list? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, Colette. But I'm saying, Charlie, but I'm okay. I can see. Actually, I'm not going to go to Mozambique. Yeah, but, um, I think out of all of them, Libya is the only, yeah, Libya is the one that I think last traveled to. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it was amazing. But you've been to Mauritius too? I've been to Mauritius. Uh, hey. Yeah, my new Tom is that look my new boy now. Both figure corn. Yeah, and that's it. Look, Africa has some of the most beautiful countries that we've got. And the question, Rubu Salu and Olunga, Ilo Kono Kogor. Now, which, how do you see us shaping our economic decisions, our political decisions, and of course our socio-economic issues when it comes to the African continent and youth leadership? Can we actually have one currency in Africa? I know that question keeps popping up most mm. of the time. Do share some of your thoughts on any of our social media pages. Just remember to hashtag your na daily tater, or you can send us your messages, your video notes, and your voice notes on our WhatsApp number, ilang 072-316-1329 or you can also talk about it on 011-339-1315. Yes, Nicole, I think it's time to talk about it. We got the opportunity to talk about it and talk about it. Speak to it who are doing different work in different countries in Africa. And look, we'll see the perspective of it. But we'll see what we're doing. Let's just go quickly on social media. We really need fresh minds in the countries leadership to bring fresh ideas to deal with what we're facing as the youth. The parliament has turned to an old age home. These people can't really relate to what we're going through. Only then we can be able to change how Africa looks like by starting here at home. That's quite interesting because we know what in the year 2030, almost half of Africa will be young people mm. under the age of 30. But we do get to speak to Kilo Kituafe, who is a chartered accountant and business advocate based in Botswana, the most prosperous country in Africa. He's a radio talk show host and where he speaks about government regulations call and a show called Private Equity Investment. Kilo, welcome to Daily Teta. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolette. Um, a pleasure for all men. Mm. I think Rikene Stratikota Benkilo, how has COVID-19 affected the most prosperous country in Africa? <laughs> um, I think COVID-19 has affected all the countries worldwide. And we're seeing cases and cases increasing in the day. And I'm aware that in South Africa as well, we're seeing a large number of cases every single day. Mm. Um, but I think we're going to turn a bit better, if I could say, and kind of the main situation um, locally. Um, for the mere fact that um, the member of Ghana, one of the biggest challenges that we always had before COVID 19 mm. was that we were hard hit by HIV and AIDS. Mm. Mm. So now, there's this new virus in the picture, and then it's kind of bringing more problems for us, and that now, because of the mere fact that we had a lockdown, a lot of things came to a standstill. Mm. So when you start talking about businesses, that's we can about daily life goods and so many other things that affect the social economic issue. It it just escalates the situation. Mm. So it then comes up now to can government get a standstill into a management of how things will be done in the country. What do you start looking forward to into the new normal? Because now I say it's going to live with the virus, sadly. So living with the virus then now how better to manage our resources. How better do we manage what we have with the country? How do we manage our skill force? And what do we do that we have in order to then operate and stimulate the economy? Mm. So I think Botswana is, 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 is coming up to now adapting what is normal. Kilo, mm. but mm. how has Basavako Botswana actively uh, 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 shaped the way leadership is dealing with COVID 19? Um, maybe take it from this perspective. I'm looking at the, the, the mere efforts that government is making for us. For example, we're getting free healthcare, we're mm. getting free basic education. Because of these two, these are the basic foundations that then guide the way in which livelihood can be integrated throughout Botswana. With that said, we need to start looking into now what opportunities do we have around the country that mm. particularly the youth to be able to enter into. Now, the service sector employs a lot of Nine percent of the active population. Mm. With that in mind, we then come to say what are the opportunities that we see surrounding the different finance sectors in Botswana. Mm. For example, our importation bill in Botswana is roughly around 40 billion billion. That's approximately around 60 million, 60 billion mm. rands or so. Mm. 
we recognize and we understand what community have and concern. Mm. That's why we need now actually have a constitutional saying, fine, because we are importing communities A, B, and C, I can actually venture into this particular community because that's my field of expertise. Mm. And I can venture into one two and three as well. Mm. And then now, government as well has moved a handful of us in that government actually gives out both subsidies, grants, and loan schemes for youth entrepreneurs in Botswana who are willing to enter into these particular sectors or into manufacturing these type of commodities. Mm. And it's not just in the manufacturing sector. We also look at the tourism industry as well. We look at the mining industry as well, pharmaceuticals mm. and medicine. Mm. Government is actually more available to capture and it helps you grow your type of business that yeah. you want to venture into, particularly if you're a youth member. Kilo. And then the list even goes on and on. Yes, my lady. Uh, unfortunately, time is not on our side this morning, but I wanted to ask you one quick one, um, which is simply, what is the one thing that you think Ipotswana needs to develop at this time? Just one thing, top of it. Um, I think we need to accelerate the rate at which we do business in Botswana, the rate at which we invite foreign direct investors in Botswana. Okay. I mean, being at the center of the Saudi region, we have strategic alliances in yeah. which you can try to build and get the data Okay. Look, Kilo, we really appreciate for you speaking to us here at Good Daily Teta this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. The pleasure is mine. So, Mbukilu, Abone Kaya, Lamchan, Sikralen, Jelai, Potswana, Guma, Kelo, and Epat, Aspele, Lapo, after the earth break. So, Tiku, Siongene, Lusutu, Sige, Spone, and Abugut, Izinto, Zambaganja, Nibona, when it comes to African leadership. We've got to start to care. We're talking about African leadership, Lohono, yeah. looking at the different countries that are off in Botswana, and right now we're going into Lesotho. Now we know, what, yes, our countries may be doing well at face value, but we do, cha do experience some challenges, especially on mm. the ground. And right now we get an opportunity to speak to Ngane Maope, who's a filmmaker and an author of the book called Kodiamala, who is from Lesotho, and also Neo Leduma, mm. who's an activist and a junior lecturer at the Val University of Technology. But before we talk about let's go and and see some of the comments from Basotu, Basoba Basotu, that they have according to yeah. the issues that they are facing in Lesotho. The problem has always been um, government It's very much afraid of um, the young people. Uh, whether it's the potential that they see in them, the energy that they see in them. Uh, because I don't necessarily think that um, they will be afraid of competition coming from them. But to a certain extent, they, there is this fear um, um, that exists within government. Yes, there are no works, but they can help us with what we are already doing by promoting and funding our businesses. I've been to, to workshops where there were people with ideas who needed money, there were people with money, and the people with the money, they were saying, you don't come to us, you don't, you don't apply, and the people were saying, but when we do come, you don't give us the proper guidance, you see. There seems to be a gap, basically. Well, the government, well, like, it chooses certain spots because tennis isn't a main spot in the country. They mainly focus on soccer, and they take soccer um, more seriously than other sports. Be treated at the same standard. No matter the age, the, how rich the person is, how poor the person is, a fair chance not choosing any gender, any age, anything. Just being given a fair opportunity for everything because everyone has rights in this world. Economic empowerment for the young people, not for the individual or 120 people, for them and their We are born again. Ulu shala pola se lusu tugeli akaz guti boni inkinga batlanga bezana na zoi in ena kona sulu guti mkonwe ni bona ba boni guti. What are the things that we should be challenging? We are born from the ngano kala kulunge guze polu guti itranga pela melu guve no shinjo lezo season atu guti sipe na ma popo swa guti so ala nga pante. Particularly my studio guests of course trading us uh, on ngano studio leto and of course unayo trading us lapa through Vmix. I guess kala ngano welcome to the show uh, this morning. Getting booze. 
I mean, COVID-19 into Eshaye Unkumundu across the world. I mean, Ilusutu Nayo has been very fortunate amongst many other countries. Ugut, it has had of people that have been affected, but economically they're affected because of mass suppliers. I was challenging Nesim, how are people dealing with COVID-19? Um, the thing is, what happened was that it was quite interesting. Mm. South Africa was hit with COVID-19 initially first, and then Lesotho had no cases for mm. a few mm. months. Mm. Only recently, in the last couple of weeks, have mm. we seen, you know, a few cases crop up. And it has caused panic mm. because what was initially a very comfortable place to be in, Mm. which was, we're not affected by COVID-19, mm. has now become, we're very underprepared for COVID-19. Mm. Mm. So that's, that's, that's what is going on on the ground, is that people are taking initiative in their own homes to see how best they can actually um, circumvent it getting even worse. Because you must remember, majority of the Lesotho population is rural, mm. and um, that can also mean that uh, accessibility of medical supplies, mm. accessibility of help, or any kind of uh, sort of like uh, the what's called the PPE mm. you would require, mm -hmm. is hard to access, mainly because of the roads and the way but, in which the topography of the government. Would you not think, Wuti, it would not be a, a big problem in Makaya because of the reality that there's no uh, cr there's no crowding, there's not a lot of people in one space. Because in Makaya, man, there's a lot of distance, there's a lot of movement. I wouldn't think that would be such a big problem. No, what I, what I was meaning was that I was saying that if in fact spreads, because in the okay. city, in the yeah. capital area, yeah. it is congested. Yeah. And there isn't, uh, it's not always conducive for social distancing. Mm. So what I'm meaning is that if it does in fact spread to I get the, the, mm. the thing, the, you know, the, the, the rural areas, mm. then it will be difficult because this, the, the way in which the country itself mm. is ill-equipped to transport mm, mm, uh, what's needed, what's needed mm. is what is actually the problem. So a person mm. would be isolated yeah. and wouldn't be getting the sufficient help. Mm. No. And I think let's bring in Neo Leduma into our conversation. Uh, Neo, welcome to Daily Teta. Okay, thank you very much and greetings to your viewers. Amazing. Now, Dr. Mwekete Majora is the new prime um, um, minister of the Kingdom of Lesotho. But of course, Ratsiba this didn't come at an easy feat. Can you tell us also what are some of the challenges? You know, the major challenge with us, Basu, is that, uh, honestly speaking, we don't have a functioning political system. And if we are to develop our country, we have to be successful in any way. The first thing is that we must actually see the political push because there is no way that we can fix the country unless we have fixed uh, our political system. Uh, congratulations to the Majoro, and he inherits a country really who know it is deeply rooted in the, in the, in the economies. It is deeply rooted into corruption. It is deeply uh, rooted in an unemployment. Mm. So, uh, based on what we are just discussing, I would say uh, we, we have had serious problems politically. In our know, political system has been away from, let me just say, from 1960s, from when we first had the first elections. So up to now, we are still studying the demons of our past. But I'm encouraged and I have hope to do a major a new educated uh, young people who get into politics. Things will get out because what we had was that uh, we we had people who were not educated, people who were not passionate about their country, and our parliament. If you look at the problem that we have, those are not the best brains that we have. Mm. So, answering your question, I would say there is a hope that now we have the best minds in the leadership of the Zoo who can actually try our country for something. Mm. Otherwise, we are not working as a Sure. Mm. I'm honest with that. Mm. Daily Teta family, we do apologize for mm. this distorted sound. Yeah. He is, of course, calling us all the way from the kingdom of Lesotho. Uh, now, maybe Arbule Leka Horena, representation of the youth, mm. the leadership currently, is that something that you are happy with? Do you want to see change? Uh, let us just, I think we have a continental issue here yeah, of youth. Yeah. yeah. 
Our young people are not partners in the Our young people are not, they don't take the politics seriously. They mm. don't see the politics as an opportunity to develop our country. So generally now, mm. I'm not here. Yeah. Looking from the deployment we have to government, uh, looking at the level of uh, unemployment, is that our young people are, are, are not taking their, their destiny. Mm. They are not trying to the country. So I'm generally not happy. That's how I feel. Because if I was to, to say clearly, I would say, you know, the young people are generally excluded from the economy. Young people are actually excluded from the direction of the country. Mm. So with the level of the young people that are deployed, working, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy with the percentage of young people. Okay. Mm. Some is not necessarily say we say before uh, skirt and jing skirt. When you talk about our social ills in Lesotho, yes. uh, how do we curb them? What are they? Jumping on. Um, I think the main social ill. You know, you know, it's so difficult sometimes to 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 try and think of the the disadvantages of our country. Yeah. When it's when culturally and traditionally, there's very little wrong. Mm. Okay. Mm. You know, because you must realize Lesotho is, is a country where it, it was colonized, yes, mm. but it, it is very um, steeped in traditional values. Mm. So black traditional values, mm. which work and function. Mm. That's why we would have a problem with youth not being involved in politics because mm. it's an ageist society. Mm. The elders take care of the young. Mm. So you're saying that the youth are not very active in anything progressive of the next generation? No, the, the youth are very ambitious mm. to be involved. What becomes problematic is that we're living in a society, in modern day society, where expectations are put on the youth mm. to now act and be in certain positions. So now the youth has to rise to despite, mm. despite uh, our traditional values, mm. Mm. to now meet this new day where we must now be somebody's and we must now rule and be in politics and so on. Mm. But now are the, the older generation ready to receive that? Is there poverty in Lesotho? There is extreme poverty. Yeah. Yes, uh, especially with the HIV pandemic that yes. became mm. a big issue with orphans and uh, older people being left destitute. Mm. So yes, that, that is a, a, an issue. Mostly the poverty has to do with uh, the way in which we uh, categorize economics. In mm. Lesotho, there's mm. subsistence farming. Mm. There isn't any commercial farming. Mm. People live hand to mouth, mm. which is an old system of living. Yes, yeah, yeah, mm. mm. corner. it makes me realize that I'm running about South Africa, especially about Tabashi, do not realize in King about Tabashi in other countries, yeah. which is why after the earthquakes of the school of Muntu, who's lived in different countries, which is of course Umaiti, Jim, also Kazilagabans, which experience I could be we in part. I guess this is Amazu, a promo from the late and former Dr. Nelson Mandela. To the youth of South Africa, it is encouraging to know that are throughout all the present times and solution-seeking moments of today, you still find the courage to return to the elders. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers the fear. Hope is a powerful weapon, and no one power on earth can deprive you of. To deny people their human rights is to challenge their very humanity. To impose on them a rich life of hunger and deprivation is to dehumanize them. The spirit of people cannot be crushed. And no matter what happens to the present leadership, new leaders will arise like mushrooms till full victory is won. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I pay tribute to the endless heroism of youth. You, the young lions, have energized our entire struggle. Daily Teta celebrates Mandela Month. Kamalami ngu mawande ama shabala langi ndateli ngu newspaper is Sunday Times, ndateli years of politics. The issues that are burning with young people at this time within the African continent is the issue of the economy of the continent, which is not in the hands of Africans. Siyaz Wuti, most African countries are super rich with minerals, uh, they are super rich with all other forms of riches that cannot be found anywhere else in the world. 
But a challenge in Kulu, Oguti, those riches currently in the main, they are not benefiting African uh, people. So, in King and Kulu, Galeo, Egbunar Oguti, Kumele, a resolve where, and it can only be resolved by young people taking up uh, leadership positions within the political space. Uh, there is no need for Africans to be fighting among each other because those wars are caused by Western investors that come in and they want to dictate uh, uh, as to how, where, who benefits from those uh, particular uh, mineral riches of countries like TRC. They, they cause conflict among locals. They go in, take all the wealth to their respective countries and basically Ama Africa so inking in Kulu Ilezo, Zogutu Mkebo, while a continent is in the hands of outsiders and locals are not benefiting, but they keep on fighting among themselves, not knowing Uguti Yini Lea by Bangaya. But me Uguti so on Kejang Africa, Wonka Mazal Africa, be Kuluma in Kulume or the Uguti Musa Africa was always a business. Fifty-one percent must benefit Abantu Bumtabu. 49% were Nigerian investors in the West. So uh, I, I think that's where problems are in Zimbabwe began. And I'm going to go to longer until such time that we all get to that position of claiming the mineral wealth and all other wealth in, in, within the respective countries of, of the continent and speak in one voice at the level of the African Union. I think the African Union also failed in Zimbabwe and Goguti, Baba Ege and Goguti, to be bullied by these Western countries which are much more powerful to, and are able to bully small countries when they operate as these small little countries like Zimbabwe. Rohwa Mgele back on Daily Teton. Zera Mokwa Yanima Wande, who is a political journalist at Sunday Times. Abule Lakatona, some of the problems that the youth on the African continent are experiencing. But one thing that he really said that I think stuck with me yeah. is the fact that as Africans, we need to, be stop, to stop fighting amongst ourselves mm. because that's going to be key to Africa moving forward. Kota Nicoletti, how do we stop if us understand that? I mean, Yakabangu Muto Musha Oseli Mlazi or Oseli Kapa. Uh, it doesn't think about the problems that Inganya say Kenya is going through mm. and does not relate to them as their own. And how do you become united if a Sbonelan? Yeah, I mean, that's a serious, that's a, actually a very, very important question that you're asking. And perhaps mighty Jamie, who was born in Zambia, grew up in Zimbabwe, and now based in South Africa, who is now a political analyst. How do we get an understanding of what is happening across the different African countries? He has a vast knowledge on how these three countries, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, are impacting the rest of the world. Mighty mm. Jamie, welcome to Daily Teta. A pleasure to be here. Mm. Maybe you can take us through some of the experiences of living on these three countries on the African continent. Yeah, so it in Kalyong Pendulumbuzo or Kolo Kal. Ubuzuguti singa slang and aranjani as Ama Africa. I think Uguti language is one of the issues of Melesi Peg. If singa Kulmsani, Molimolu Oluan, Angeges Tolan. Mm. That what Lohanya that we're looking for, it won't be there. Mm. So what one see key to te Sisutu, Sizulu, mm. Sishona, mm. Nyanja, Swahili. And that may be difficult for everyone to do, mm. but what we can do is at least try to learn these other languages to mm. the point that they're accessible to us all. Mm. Some of Ingabano e corner is because Sibugana Angati Asingabatobany. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What a singer Banta Banye, if you beg a history to sing in this way, so on came on Muntu Oi one. And Lababan to be being a differentiate to good eye, Labangaba lapas, but ten on Labangabangap. The oppression was the same. Yeah. Cecil John Rhodes didn't care about whether it's South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi. He had one project, and that project was to make sure that the English benefit from the resources of Southern Africa. Mm. And he facilitated that. That's why Utolu Uti is Zimbabwe Begutwa I Rhodesia. After Usisil John Rhodes. Because we lizwe lake, ne kamalake. Yena eabon guti bebe enza. So bebem pushela is into za kuguti be notice e Europe. Be notice e English. So that's one thing that we need to do for unity. Yeah. What is Sbona and Jenga Bantu Banya Skulumisan? And that may require some linguistic transference in yeah. terms of what is Fundi in Dim Zabantu, Bessesbona, or what Abantu Bapila Ganjani, Bakulma Ganjani, Bakabanga Ganjani. Jamie, 
Nkoli so ungena lapho because ngiyazi ufuna ukudlulela but how do we see and ukuthi lento kube into enormal knowing ukuthi someone is jealous uh, there's more of jealousy than appreciation i would hear ukuthi wami okhulumiswa yili i would not appreciate like oh wow okhulumiswa yili but more feel like hey yini lo ikhulumayo i mean i think there's a problem at the back end ukuthi thina we more have hate when we see into sky to ayilanga versus something that we should be appreciating yeah, we This is what I'm saying. We need to get past that point. That point does exist, and we need to find ways to integrate. We ama music festival, my COVID sipela, zamu letter labo diamond platinums, yenzama collaborations. Ugute abantu batolin inda uzo buga banya abantu ngendlela a healthy. But going back to the other question that you had asked in terms of observations, mm. there are challenges that exist in democracy across africa number one you've got corruption ikona mm. e zambia ikona e zimbabwe ikona na lapa imali ya bantu ayi la pagmeli ye mm. that's one number two utolu kuti kusase ne outside influence mm. especially maupega inda uefana ne zambia ne, cha, ne, ne, ne zimbabwe i china ibolega abantu imali and itata ama resources ukuthi abantu bebhadale le imali sure. so utholu ukuthi e zimbabwe nase zambia they've got massive debt that they have to service towards china mm. and the chinese now are taking their resources and that is preventing the development of those economies mm. in fact right now is zambia sekubukwa ngathi ikholoni nje yase china so even though kune democracy and even though ama parties ayachinjana lapha ya Isquality as corner lapha is China basically is Shonisa is Zambia. Sure. And, and, and then when you now move, so, no, Kubega. Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to find out what we're talking about on the resources that are on the African continent, Jamie. How then do we make sure that the youth can take advantage of them? Yeah, as the youth, I get me and tell you to go to Ipega Ama resources, Jenga Copa, Norman Nicole, Nesinders Fernandez. E youth kumele ipege e technology okay. ne 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 ma spaces lawa amasha. If you look at the most recent developments in terms of wealth acquisition, mm. most of the wealth that has been acquired recently has been digital. Yes. You know through the development of apps, TikTok, Facebook, and all of these um, online facing uh, spaces. Yes. So young people need to be collaborating in product development e-commerce mm. and the development of software and computer engineering solutions mm. for Africa because the U the West is not looking at Africa to develop platforms for us mm. they don't even care about our market sometimes mm. that's why Utoluguti Spotify was existing for 10 years before they even came to Africa mm. because they were not even caring to create a music platform for us so begune missed opportunity lapaya for young people to create a music platform for African music that we can all access on our phones. Mm. We are wanting to ensure you go this is how young people need to be thinking. Yeah. Because what are the odds that they'll be able to get into copper mining, uh, diamond mining? These are industries for la makesha. Tina gumeles bega i modern economy in Dawazet where we can create because the fashion industry is a big industry. Yeah. Mm. Africa has a footprint, but we're still buying more European fashion than our local fashion yes. we should be directing the direction of fashion on africa mm. you know e all star e converse into as a lap so so far and, and of course all star is not african but yeah. there's, there's things that we've done to those brands mm. where we've localized them True. do you see what i'm saying mm. so I know, if you look at hip-hop but creator industry with billions now yeah from their own base why sing a tatinto there too? E Afrobeat, e jazz, e quieto, you know, all of these things as nazo. Mm. Sis packages, faggy technology, sis dice tina amongst ourselves. Mm. This is how we must be thinking as young people. And Yazi, you caught in a sigma when I might teach him was a good little because we know you're going to ask us in Buzza Balegile that the young people should be asking. Yeah, uh, Sponga, you're cool for being with us, I'm clear, and just such a bullet opportunity. No, in Jalogi, we are again buzzy abuse. Are you asking those self those questions, Nicolette? Ekaya, but after the air breaking, full good to see so chiga la pay East Africa, say Rwanda, who knows the same from your pocket. I never spawn is with you in East Africa. The seven Zaganjan is it.
A very good evening to you all. It is another edition of Business Digest. Thank you for being part of the show. Stay tuned for what's coming up. All right, so we are coming to you from the Transform Africa Summit, where major discussions are currently undergoing on how to boost Africa's digital economy. Do you have any encouraging words for other girls out there who'd, uh, who'd want to join the tech industry, but something is holding them back? What kind of encouraging words would you, would you give them? Uh, I, can, I can tell her, even if there is, um, how can I say it, um, they must try. Even if they don't succeed, they must continue trying, trying, and they will see how we feel when we succeed. Welcome back to Daily Tech. Hello, we say PC One. Such a good thing. Such a good thing. Actually, night. If we start figure, we are talking about African youth leadership. We are talking with Izzy Mugomaya Mazwe, Africa's Megan Jani. We are trying to learn about things. This thing as Zazi. There are challenges. Mugomaya Mazwe. And of course, Njobu Bona Gela Pai Umsebe Nzikasis Ui Riza Diana, who is a TV host and a producer. Yena Gela Ustalezwe Ni Lasse Rwanda, but also Eki Gali to be exact, which is known as also as a country, a fast-growing economy in Africa. By a cool and gembela, but she gets to join us this morning. Um, Iriza, welcome to Daily Teta. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, look, well, firstly, congratulations on the work you're doing. We see you are, you are working with the young people. Can you give us an update to what it feels to be a young person in your country? Well, being a young person in so to me being a young person and growing my career and growing um, my ideas and, and everything I want to do in this country in such a good country it's, it's, it's a very good thing uh, Deanna, we're struggling with the internet and daily, uh, daily Tata family. We're just struggling a little bit with the technical issues mm. there. We will try and establish a better connection because, of course, she is calling us all the way from Rwanda. Sure. Deanna, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you clearly. Okay, oh, let's try that again. <laughs> <laughs> You're explaining what it means to be a young person in Rwanda. Uh, in Rwanda. Yes, I was saying being a young person in Rwanda is a very good thing because we have a very um, supportive government and a very supportive um, leadership system. So um, our ideas uh, in the de 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 developmental uh, strategies, developmental growth are really appreciated and we're being given a really good platform to grow as young people, really good platform to, 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 to take over the... Um, leadership and, 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 and government that is that is um, that is um, that that is in place so far so it's a really good and empowering thing to be a young person that is trying to grow and develop in Rwanda today. It's, it's very interesting that you say that Deanna because before we started the show we're talking about we're waiting for that African country where the youth is going to say we are happy with the current leadership mm -hmm. so it's very very lovely to hear but of course there needs to be a succession plan who are some of the new leaders that are going to be coming up in Rwanda in your eyes? So far, I don't think I have an answer to that. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we, the country we're living in, I'm living in so far, okay, personally, as a Rwandan, it's a country that has a very um, dark history, should I say. Yes. We have, uh, we're coming from, a, we, we, we used to have a, a leadership system that was very, um, bad basically it's just a bad leadership system but so far we have a really good uh, leadership system and mm. we can just um, wake up one morning and say we have somebody who can take over the government that we have uh, today uh, that is a very political um, question it's just they have not in place to answer that mm. but um, I would say the Rwanda patriotic um, RPF he is creating a system to make sure that um, um, there's a success plan uh, in being set up. Plus also the democracy in Rwanda, the world should appreciate the fact that we have a very young democracy mm. in Rwanda, so we cannot um, dictate successionships uh, 
now As maybe yet. in the future but not now yeah, yeah. maybe you can tell us uh diana and again if the little family i apologize i'm only a bit of wind what are what what accelerates rwanda's progression and development well i would say good leadership first of all mm. this is a small country it's a landlocked country i wouldn't say that we have resources we actually have very few resources here in the country mm. and one of the major resources that drives the country and the country's economy is human capital yeah. um with good leadership human capital gets driven yeah and um, that also leads to the involvement growth in the country so it's mm. good leadership and cooperation amongst the citizens here in rwanda and um and also good partnerships with uh, neighboring countries and foreign countries so mm. That, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, what a pleasure to be able to be speaking to you this morning. I mean, it's just shedding light to Guti, Erwanda, Gwenza, Galaganjani, Nicolette. Mm. Um, thank you so much to Riza, Diana, who is a TV, uh, TV host, host and mm. producer, is when you get Rwanda. And you know, it makes me want to think, Guti, I guess it's like a uh, the, the other parts of the world, speaking about his expertise and knowledge when it comes to Africa and its leadership. Uh, you know, forget about uh, those that come in as investors, those that come in as Samaritans from the West, because they have never really had the best interests uh, of the Africans at heart. The sooner we understand that as African people and speak in one voice and unite and go to the geopolitical space bargaining table with one voice, demanding what is rightfully belonging to us. In fact, we, we don't even need to have these investors from outside. Africa in, is, is, is mostly developed. We can have refineries of things like oil, gold, within the African continent and be able to trade among each other as African countries instead of always relying on the West to come in as if they have something special to offer. We have our own engineers. I think from the time most countries gained independence, They've made inroads in terms of developing skills that are needed to be able to process uh, everything that is raw that we have as African people. Yes, there's a country like Madagascar where we saw a young president coming in, but if you look into the rest of the continent, uh, 54 countries in this continent, you can barely have a handful of countries wherein you can say that they have a president who's younger than 50, it's let alone talking about 40 years or younger. So, in Kinga in Kulu Leo, Espegan and I, Uguti, see Holo Abanda Vada. Abang Asawa, Zukabang, Agashim, Uguti, it comes to solutions. Abandu, Abagamuge, Uguti, Isime Suxona, Ilias Suxona, Bobaba Piraxona, Satis Tolling Gulego, as the African countries. Gwagunje, Bagamuge, Uguti Gunjalo Valley, in Lelis, Kubang, Pera Pambile. Kodwa, angboni kuyi into engasiza leyo ukuthi siye phambili. Engicaba ngokuthi intsha nje throughout the continent they they have to take it upon themselves ukuthi they must occupy leadership positions. Uh, I think it must be done by all means necessary. I think it is the only way to take this uh, continent forward because all people have had their opportunity since the 60s when the first countries like Ghana were gaining independence. I mean South Africa has been independent for 26 years now, and, and we've never had a president who's younger than 60 years of age. The current president is within his mid-60s, President Cyril Ramaphosa. And, and uh, really, these old people have accepted the status quo. Welcome back to Daily Tetel Agu SABC One. I'm sure you have learned a lot about Amaya Mazwe. You've learned the Bizana now, but also you've learned about the things at this very point. Now, since it's Lelegan Jenna's to school me with a graduate from of course the African Leadership Academy, um Upumagela Payana Jungu Muntu Otanda Ukabanga of the future of Africa. And we believe Guti it's very important to speak to the youngster Umpo Munto who joins us here on Daily Tata. Mpo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, Mpo, I guess, we, we are talking about the future of Africa. We've spoken about the history. In your mind, mind you, how, how do you feel about Africa? Where do you feel like it's last year? 
I think it's um, when, 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 when thinking about Africa, I think we live in quite an interesting time. Um, and, and when I specifically think about the future of the continent, I look at education models that are intentional about building Africa's sport leaders, that are really going to take on Africa's challenge. Mm. You know, um, and, and talking about models, I think a lot about the model the African Leadership Academy or the African Leadership University has taken on, mm. right? That's what they basically put students at the core of the curve. For example, mm. students walk into the academy and instead of declaring a major, they declare a, a mission, a personal mission. Mm. They spend their time trying to solve that problem. Mm. I think really is the first step to pushing young Africans, young youth Africans, to really think of a just cause bigger than themselves. So mm. when I, from my perspective, I think um, when I look at institutions in terms of what the youth are doing, I think I'm quite excited and, and optimistic about the future of the country. Mm. Mpo, perhaps you can maybe share with us what was your mission when you arrived at ALA? Uh, they left. Okay, my mm. mission was, was simply to revolutionize um, economic systems in South Africa, in, mm. in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Simplify it, 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 it. How do we build sustainable economic enterprise? Small mm. businesses, right? Mm. Uh, and at the academy, there's this thing called the student, um, Entrepreneurial, which is one of the core programs. Mm. Uh, students for the year, for the two years that they're here, run an enterprise where they invest money into the enterprise and students learn some of the skills to learning about um, learning about what it means to run an enterprise uh, in, in today's, uh, today's economy. I think those soft learning soft skills um, in such a space going forward, I think, allows me to better position myself in terms of understanding me to go in the middle of Alex, right? And yeah. how someone is trying to build a small to medium enterprise mm. because I've practicalize some of the concepts in an enterprise. So, mm -hmm. so I think that, that mm -hmm. was my... Mpo, let's take it a bit further and say, how do the youth or how does the youth of Africa work together economically? Wow, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I think we, we live in quite an interesting time, mm. um, given the, the birth of the, the internet and di digital artificial intelligence for both evolution. I think... When I look at it now, COVID-19, I think, has, has really forced us to question how we really do things, right? Um, right now, what I've been doing, for example, with the Leaders Podcast, is that I've been happy with views all around the continent, mm. but I'm in South Africa because of the, 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 the technology, mm. the advancement of technology. Mm. So I think there are really interesting ways uh, that, Af that, um, that, that African youth can work together being in the same space. Mm, mm. Um, those are some of, of the opportunities that, that really come up as time goes. Mm. Yeah. And Paul Baninga Bantu have worked with us before us, Ms. Krumang leadership. I mean, Abu Bab, Nelson, Mandela, uh, they've come and they play the role. You look like for Steve Biko. And when all these names always come up, I think and say, in your eyes, who is the next future leader that you mm. see uh, either in South Africa or Tampere, Rwanda, Ubani, Ombona, Iowen? Okay, I think specifically on on the uh, on South Africa, I look at the likes of um, a lady by the name of Zuleka Patel, mm -hmm. right? Um, the former chief country at at uh, sorry at um, Pretoria Girls High School, mm -hmm. and when I look at such young individuals who are actively structural any institutional racism at such a very young tender age, mm -hmm. I think those are some young people understanding what has happened for the past decade and then mm. walking in and only disrupting but respectfully articulating what they believe should be should be happening in our institution mm. i think there's quite a lot of cases uh, on political scale i think uh, you look at the lack of who you said in George. as much as clearly he is i think those are quite um uh, you know spots in which you see a very young part of the EFF coming in and really disrupting the Mm. 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 Paul, let's talk about being purposeful led. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what um, that is okay. about, and and, and do we can we get leadership in Africa that is purpose led? Yes, I think I think yes, I think it's very important. I think, for, for example, when I go back, um, given Africa's uh, projection, for, for example, population wise to double in the next couple of decades. 
Mm. I think it brings a lot of questions around, is Africa's population going to be its greatest threat or its greatest asset? Mm. And I think that if we are intentional in building individuals who are thought leaders, we have a chance to make our population our greatest asset, right? Mm. Um, and, and I think that really delves into how do we teach purpose? I think purpose in itself, due to its nature, it's not something we can really quantify, right? Only in a certain season of your life, like, okay, this is what I believe is yeah. my purpose, but I cannot wake up like for the next week, this is my purpose. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I think creating spaces in which young people can really question who are you and what is the bigger just cause that I want to live for in the specific season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we cannot go any further than that. Thank you so much, Paul, for your time. Thank you.